What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at some of my recent options trading. And options, if you're not familiar with them, I absolutely love selling options for premium. Now there's two sides of options that many traders are uh, familiar with. You can either obviously buy or you can sell options. Both have their pros, both have their cons. I personally really like being on the sell side of options, essentially writing options to collect premium on things that I don't mind buying anyways. I know that sounds complicated and I do have a full video on my trading strategy when it comes to options. When it comes to writing puts or selling puts uh, out of the money, I find this to be a strategy that is conservative to my style, uh, the way I trade them. Uh, anyways, today we're gonna be taking a look at some examples and I'm gonna be showing you some of the recent trades that I've been sharing inside of our Discord channel where I share all of my trade alerts. Okay, so let's start with an example. I've currently got the SLV iShares Silver Trust. This is essentially an ETF that tracks silver. And what you'll see here in the bottom right hand of the screen is we have some current trades open. We have two puts, one that's in profit and one that is in the red. And in this video, I'm going to go through an example as well as some of the recent options trades that I've been doing within our community and going through a little bit of kind of my thought process with this trading style. So silver has been dropping recently, but silver is something that with the metals market in general, I like to have a component of my longer term portfolio uh, allocated to the metals market. And the way that I like to play the metals market is I like to sell puts, meaning essentially I sell the right to someone else to buy shares at a certain price, and in exchange, I collect a premium as the options seller. Now again, if that sounds a bit complicated and you're newer to options, there is a video that I put together that you can watch. We'll put it in the top right hand of the screen if you'd like to check that video out. Assuming you know the basics of puts and calls, remember that when you buy puts or uh, calls, you pay a premium. When you sell them, you collect premium. I like to be on the collection side of that. Uh, there, of course, are inherent pros and cons as we'll get into. So let's take a look, for example, at some of my recent trades that I've shared inside of our Discord community. This page, by the way, is just our performance tracking page that we've recently put together. Um, you can see sort of our standard stuff, the, the indices, commodities, FX, et cetera, et cetera that we've been doing, um, the assets that we trade. And I say we, this is, this is Frank and myself, um, we have mostly only my data in there right now. I still have yet to upload Frank's data except for uh, one sample trade. I'm still in the process of building this and automating it completely. But anyways, I wanted to focus today on some options examples. So when you write uh, an option or you sell an option, you collect what is referred to as premium. Essentially, what thanks to theta decay, which is essentially time decay of an option, over time, options tend to lose their value as it gets closer and closer to the expiration date. So my two current puts that I have on uh, SLV or the silver ETF is a strike price of 21.5, which expires the 21st of July this year, and also the $20 strike price that expires the 4th of August. Uh, it's another put that I've sold both of these. Now, when I sold them, they were at a price, the option price was 0.4 and 0.36. Essentially think of this as minus, uh, I, I went short, right, at minus 0.4. Anyways, uh, you can see that right now, I, I put in some values here towards the end of market close. Uh, these are, are manually updated for now. I, I have to find a way to, to automate this process. But just for the sake of example, you can see one trade is in the red and one trade is in the blue. Uh, one is profitable, one is not profitable. Though I imagine with the recent price action in silver, I might need to update this even further. In fact, I can double click on like this option uh, and we could see what the latest prices for that. Again, it gets complicated pretty quick. So 31 cents is where it's trading here. So if I go back to my spreadsheet, let's see, are we 31 cents? Okay, yeah, so that's pretty up to date. Anyways, um, my point here is the cool thing about my option strategy where you sell the option is that you have an inherently pretty high win rate. 
And again, it's a little bit too early to tell with this as I've only taken a couple trades, but 75% of them are profitable and these still are open as sign signaled by the yellow, right? So I still have open contracts, uh, open on, on several assets. HYG, uh, I have DIA and IWM, the Russell, the Dow, a corporate bond ETF, uh, and again, my play on silver. Previously, I had two profitable trades back to back on SLV. I sold puts and I sold calls or what is called a covered call. Um, you know, both of those previous ones closed out profitable. And I still think that there's opportunity for my play on silver here to come out profitable. We'll see how that plays out. Depends what happens with the price of silver. But I want to talk about both scenarios. Let's go back to my idea on silver for a second. Now, if you recall from my video that I put on uh, about this strategy, at this point, my put is trading what is known as in the money, ITM, as opposed to out of the money. When I sold this put, it was out of the money, but now price has dropped and now this put is in the money, which what that means is that the put buyer actually could at any point before expiration could assign these shares. What that means is that I'm short 300 uh, shares, essentially three contracts at 100 shares per contract. What that means is that I actually could get assigned on market open tomorrow. I could get assigned my 300 shares, which means I would need to buy 300 shares about a 6,000 something dollar uh, commitment for me to let's call it 6.5 K commitment to buy 6.5 K worth of SLV at this price. So suddenly I would be in this trade at $6,500 worth of this trade. And I would still have this put open as well. I collected premium for this and this right up front. When you write the option, you collect premium right away. So I have premium and premium that buffers this loss that I would be floating if I get into this position, but I also can have the opportunity to average down my position. Essentially, I've sold a put at about $20 strike price. So if this market continues to trade lower, I actually get the opportunity to pick up shares at a lower price if I do get assigned. Now you can see the inherent risks here. This is essentially averaging in or dollar cost averaging, which scares a lot of traders. But if you have a longer term outlook and you believe that longer term, the price will go up anyways, selling puts can be a really great strategy, of course, with the risk of, well, you need a good bit of capital. Again, if I get assigned, I'm getting 6.5K. And if I get assigned down here, we can do some quick math. I can pull up a calculator here and we could say, well, that's essentially, we're gonna do 300 shares times $20 strike price, that means I'm gonna to have to pick, commit 6,000 more dollars to picking up these shares if the price goes under and I get assigned, okay? Now, let's talk about some scenarios though. Let's say, however, that I don't get assigned on these, but I do get assigned on these. So let's say I get assigned and I have to commit $6,500 worth on this position. If the market starts to, uh, you know, let's say that this expires worthless and I just collect the premium, I want the option to expire worthless as I am the options seller. So let's say it's, uh, it closes uh, worthless and I just collect the premium. And let's say this market drifts sideways and eventually makes its way back up. What I could do and what I likely would do is I would look to go ahead and close out my position for a profit or even close to break even, I would be fine, considering the fact that I collected premium on this trade as well as this trade, I'm making a nice little premium on both trades. Now, again, the cool thing about this is that I'm essentially averaging in, I'm dollar cost averaging on something, but I'm collecting premium in the meantime and getting paid to essentially wait. Now, if, go, if, if the price of silver just starts rising for the next month or two months or three months or six months, and I sell premium or sell puts the whole way up, the cool thing in that scenario is that without even needing to buy the shares or committing money, I could just collect premium day in, day out. So that's silver. Let's take a quick look at another example. I currently have a DIA, which is the Dow Jones. Many of you guys know in the Forex market, the uh, CFD equivalent, which is US 30. I have 
DIA as a put I've sold as well. The strike price in this case is $335. Now let's go take a look at DIA on the spreadsheet. When I sold this, I sold one put at $2.63 per uh, contract. Now, of course, I only did one, so let me show you something kind of cool. So I did, again, $2.63 per contract uh, or per, per share here. So if I go 2.63, and I times this by the contract size, which is 100 shares, I collected upfront $263 in premium just to write this option. So essentially, if the market here, when we go back to DIA, if the market starts to rally and this put expires worthless, that would be the easiest and best case scenario for my trading. Because in that case, I collect my $263 without ever needing to get assigned. So as long as we trade above this and do not get assigned, meaning uh, you know to get assigned, I would have to go at or under this price, the put buyer could have then essentially assigned the shares. Uh, as long as we don't trade underneath that, if we start to rise on the Dow, I'll collect my $263 essentially without having to do anything. That's the cool thing about writing puts, selling puts. Now, of course, you can do this on the other side, and I have done it as well. Uh, covered calls, selling calls against your position uh, can create some nice premium as well on certain particular uh, markets, of course. And when we go back to this, you can see I've only done a couple things. I also did HYG and IWM, which is a new position for me as well. Essentially, each one of these things are paying me premium. Yes, there are risks, and yes, there is a commitment here to have to buy these things uh, no matter what the price goes to. So let's talk about a nightmare situation. Let's talk, well, a, a bad situation. Let's go to IWM. Again, I sold puts on IWM with a strike price of 178. Let's say that the market has a terrible month. And again, this is the 21st of July puts. So let's say, again, we're, we're less than 30 days out, but let's say in the next 30 days, the Russell or the IWM just falls apart. And let's say we're trading at um, 165 and I get assigned. Yes, the terrible situation in that case means that I have to buy 100 shares at $178 per share. That, by the way, is a $17,800 commitment to this position. So what you can see with options, and this is one thing I get pushed back on, is that you might need a good sized account. Well, that's true. But nowadays, there are such things for people who have smaller accounts to do uh, margin accounts, which allow you to, to trade options on margin. Of course, not something I necessarily recommend. I personally like to just have cash in the account for each each, uh, each options that I uh, option trade that I do. Uh, but again, there are options. <laughs> there are options out there for trading options, whether you're a seller or a buyer. Of course, uh, selling does inherently require larger capital as essentially buying options allows you to kind of leverage yourself. Uh, like think about the guy or the girl on the other side of this who's buying the put, right? For uh, that premium that I collected, let's go take a look. We can take a look at that. So IWM, how much premium did I collect? Well, we can go right here. We could say $1.76 times 100 shares. I collected $176 in premium. Well, who paid that premium to me? The buyer. The buyer had to put up $176, but but if you're the options buyer, one pro here is that for $176, you essentially have a leveraged position to buy this put. And if, if this market crumbles, you could make a pretty substantial amount of money. This is the attraction on the buy side of options, but it's not really for me. For me, I don't mind picking up a nice, consistent small amount of money over and over and over. And if I do get assigned the shares, I do have a longer term outlook on these things and I don't really care. So if I do get assigned, even if it's at 165 and I get assigned, I'll work with the position. Perhaps in that situation, I sell another put. Perhaps I just wait it out and I, you know, let my trade come back eventually. Um, you have to understand that there are inherent risks with everything when it comes to trading. There's no strategy that comes risk-free. Uh, if you're an options buyer, you you run the the you know 
the the devil is in the the time decay right of your options that can be very very frustrating you buy uh, a put and this thing kind of just goes sideways and the whole time the put is losing tremendous amounts of value right due to time decay there's always a pro and there's always a con to everything in trading nothing is just a simple always winning concept but for me i find a lot of comfort in selling puts on things that i wouldn't mind holding in a longer term portfolio anyways thank you guys for watching hope this was helpful to you remember you can get access to all of our trade alerts uh, including our options trades we're doing 50 percent off right now if you're watching this video and you use the code ytvip while this sale is going on you'll get a massive discount on all of the options trade alerts as well as the regular trade alerts that i'm doing if you made it this far in the video, if you are that committed to sticking around with me here till this very end, do me a quick favor. And the keyword today to write in the comments section is going to be calls. Calls, of course, mean you're bullish. So if you're bullish on this video and you made it this far, type the word calls in the YouTube comment section. I really appreciate it. And I will try to heart your comment for uh, as a thank you for making it this far in the video. Have a great day, we'll see you next time. Hey, guess what? I just found a video made just for you. Click this video to help with your trading and uh, thanks for watching.